Welcome to the World of Golden Boy, a 1939 movie filled with funny, shocking, and sad moments. As you dive into this classic film, get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. Which character's journey resonated with you the most? Or perhaps you remember the first time you experienced the magic of this movie? Share your cherished memories and personal experiences with us in the comments below. We can't wait to hear your stories. Keep watching for more interesting facts about Golden Boy. Golden Boy, a classic movie from 1939, follows the story of Joe Bonaparte, a talented violinist caught between his love for music and his ambition to become a successful boxer. Set in New York City during the Great Depression, the film portrays Joe's struggle with familial expectations, the allure of fame, and his own dreams. The plot centers on Joe's inner conflict as he enters the competitive world of boxing while preserving his musical talent. Throughout his journey, he encounters various influential figures, including his manager Tom Moody, his girlfriend Lorna Moon, and her father Mr. Bonaparte. Set in the gritty backdrop of 1930s New York City, Golden Boy captures the hardships and aspirations of its inhabitants during a challenging period in American history. Upon its release, Golden Boy received critical acclaim and garnered multiple award nominations. Lead actor William Holden delivers a powerful performance as Joe Bonaparte. The film explores themes of ambition, sacrifice, and identity that remain relevant today. In summary, Golden Boy is a gripping drama that examines human ambition and the pursuit of dreams amid adversity. Its enduring story and memorable characters have cemented its status as a cinematic classic. Barbara Stanwyck, known for being kind to her fellow actors, particularly praised Anne Margaret during her Golden Globes acceptance speech in 1984. Stanwyck's habit of recognizing her peers was a key part of her career, as seen in her earlier work with Adolf Menju in Forbidden and later in To Please a Lady. Another famous actor, Lee J. Cobb, was featured in Karen Burroughs Hansberry's book Bad Boys, The Actors of Film Noir. These connections show the close relationships in the film industry, highlighting the friendly camaraderie and mutual respect among actors. Such interactions make the movie world more interesting, adding depth to performances and stories for audiences to enjoy. Sam Levine and Joseph Calia acted together in After the Thin Man in 1936. At first, Columbia wanted Richard Carlson for the main role. But since he was busy with a Broadway play called Stars in Your Eyes, they picked William Holden instead. It was Holden's first big role, and Barbara Stanwyck, who supported his casting, became his advocate. To show his gratitude, Holden started a tradition of sending Stanwyck flowers every year on the film's first shooting day anniversary. This small act strengthened their bond and reflected the friendly atmosphere on set. The chemistry between the actors played a crucial role in the film's success, adding depth to their performances. Golden Boy wasn't just a movie, it showcased collaboration and thankfulness in the movie industry. It's interesting how small gestures can create lasting connections in the unpredictable Hollywood world. Holden's flowers weren't just a thank you. They also symbolized how artists are connected in their shared goal of telling great stories. Golden Boy has a lasting impact, inspiring future filmmakers and actors. It's a story that goes beyond its running time and leaves a memorable impression on everyone involved. This film's journey to the big screen is a story of persistence, talent, and unexpected support. Edward Brophy, known for his role as Doivy Dickles, inspired a character in the movie. The studio wasn't sure about casting William Holden as the lead, but Barbara Stanwyck believed in him and saved his role. This support kickstarted Holden's successful Hollywood career. At the 50th Annual Academy Awards, Holden thanked Stanwyck, showing how important belief in each other is in the film industry. Jack Warner initially wanted to cast Clifford Audit's play for Wayne Morris, showing how competitive casting was back then. This film shows how Hollywood worked together, how one person's belief could change an actor's career and a movie's fate. It also shows the challenges of casting and turning plays into movies. The backstory of this film reminds us of the human side of movie making and how support and belief can shape careers and enrich the film world. In the 1939 movie Golden Boy, Barbara Stanwyck played a crucial role in her co-star's career. Initially thought to be too light for the lead role, she convinced the producers to keep him a choice that made him a star. Many years later, at the 50th Annual Academy Awards in 1978, the significance of her support became clear when the now famous actor publicly thanked her, leading to a touching moment that touched the audience. Stanwyck's influence didn't stop there. In 1982, when she got an honorary Academy Award, she warmly remembered her late co-star, who had passed away just months before, fulfilling his wish for her to win an Oscar. Adolf Menju, who played Tom Moody in the film, 
later portrayed a character with a similar name in another production. This interconnectedness highlights the depth of relationships in Hollywood's golden age. Such moments last, creating a rich history of movies. In the search for the actor to play Joe Bonaparte, over 80 individuals underwent screen tests, with William Holden emerging as the surprising choice despite stiff competition from nearly 5,000 contenders, including a young Dale Robertson. Barbara Stanwyck and director Robin Mamoulian championed Holden's cause. Following its success on the big screen, Golden Boy transitioned to radio, with a 60-minute adaptation airing on December 8, 1946, featuring Sam Levine reprising his role. Robert Sterling, though initially vying for the lead, settled for an uncredited role in the film. He later portrayed a boxer in Ringside Macy, where he crossed paths with his future spouse, Anne Southern. Sam Levine, whose short biography can be found in Karen Burroughs Hansberry's book Bad Boys, The Actors of Film Noir, was part of the cast. During filming, William Holden got knocked unconscious while boxing on set with James Cannonball Green. Although Holden thought the footage of the knockout would be impressive, director Robin Mamoulian deemed it unrealistic and unusable, despite Columbia purchasing the rights to Clifford Audit's play in 1938 for a substantial sum of $100,000. Despite the setback, Holden suffered from headaches for a week afterward. In the film, William Holden, in his first significant role, portrayed a boxer who had a passion for the violin. He expressed his gratitude towards Barbara Stanwyck, who advocated for his casting, by sending her flowers annually on the filming's anniversary. Despite their bond and golden boy, Holden and Lee J. Cobb later reunited as adversaries in the dark past. To prepare for his role, Holden immersed himself in training, dedicating long hours to boxing and violin practice. He spent a week prior to filming taking lessons in both disciplines and continued his rigorous regimen throughout the 11 weeks of shooting. His commitment ensured authenticity in his portrayal as a boxer violinist. Frank Capra initially intended to direct the movie, with Gene Arthur slated for the role of Lorna Moon. However, when he learned that Robin Mamoulian would direct what later became another film, Capra shifted his focus. He found himself drawn to the script of another project, initially rejected, which eventually became Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, also starring Gene Arthur. The play, which premiered in New York in 1937, enjoyed a successful run of 250 performances. Luther Adler portrayed the lead character, Joe Bonaparte, while Francis Farmer took on the role of Lorna Moon, and Roman Bonin played Tom Moody. Notably, Lee J. Cobb appeared in the play as Mr. Carp. Clifford Odditz, the playwright, envisioned John Garfield for the role of Joe Bonaparte. However, the group theater company selected Luther Adler instead. Shortly after, Garfield departed from the group theater, making his way to Hollywood. In the production of Golden Boy, the director, Robin Mamoulian, initially sought the playwright Clifford Odditz to adapt the play into a screenplay. However, Odditz declined the offer due to a past incident where Mamoulian had denied him a role in a New York play. Interestingly, Lee J. Cobb, who portrayed the middle-aged father of the protagonist, was actually only 27 years old at the time of filming. Despite this age gap, Cobb convincingly depicted the father figure. Additionally, Barbara Stanwyck acted alongside William Holden, who played the titular character in Executive Suite, marking their second and final collaboration. The film showcases a blend of talent and dynamics, creating a memorable viewing experience. In the world of 1939 movies, notable figures like John Ray stood out, being part of two Oscar Best Picture winners, namely All Quiet on the Western Front and Gone with the Wind. Ray's involvement extended to three other nominees, showing his significant role in films like I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, and Boys Town. Behind the scenes, Columbia boss Harry Cohn aimed to secure John Garfield for a role in a movie. However, Warner Brothers, where Garfield was under contract, adamantly refused to lend him out. This decision not only reflected the industry dynamics, but also hinted at a lingering tension between Cohn and Warner. Jack Warner's displeasure with Cohn became evident due to the latter's choice to award the first Irving Thalberg Award to former Warner Brothers producer Daryl Zanuck. The rift between Zanuck and Jack Warner, originating from a salary dispute in 1933, added a layer of complexity to the situation. Interestingly, the role went through a series of considerations. According to biographer Bob Thomas, both John Garfield and Tyrone Power turned down the opportunity. This insight sheds light on the casting intricacies and the decisions made by actors in shaping the narrative. In the Hollywood dynamics, the behind-the-scenes drama, and casting decisions ultimately contributed to the creation of a movie, a story woven by the talents and choices of its key players. 
In the world of Broadway, Sam Levine left his imprint by originating a role in the original production of Neil Simon's The Sunshine Boys in 1975. However, when it came to the movie adaptation, the role went to George Burns. Around the same time, Lee J. Cobb, early in his career, appeared in two Hope Along Cassidy films in 1937 north of the Rio Grande and Rustler's Valley. The story behind Golden Boy comes from a real-life experience. Playwright Clifford Oditz crafted the play after hearing a story from Paul Mooney. Faced with the dilemma of boxing endangering his secondary career as a violinist, Mooney gave up the sport. This interesting story laid the foundation for the captivating plot of Golden Boy. Essentially, the journey of the show intertwines the paths of these notable figures in entertainment Sam Levine's Broadway contribution, Lee J. Cobb's early film roles, and Clifford Oditz's drawing inspiration from Paul Mooney's experiences. Each element weaves into the fabric of the narrative, creating a tale that goes beyond the boxing ring. In a surprising twist, the 1939 movie Golden Boy reveals a tragic reality about its production. Despite its eventual success, the film marked a sad moment in Hollywood history when news emerged that the lead actor, William Holden, faced significant personal struggles during filming. He, portraying the ambitious and conflicted character, battled his own demons off-screen, dealing with depression and uncertainty about his future in the film industry. Behind the scenes, the movie captured audiences with its gripping story and strong performances. However, underneath it all, his internal struggles overshadowed the production. Despite his talent and dedication, his personal issues made the filming process challenging. Amidst the glamour of Hollywood, Golden Boy stands as a poignant reminder of the difficulties faced by those in its world. While the film remains a timeless classic, the personal turmoil experienced by its lead sheds light on the harsh realities of life in the spotlight. Ultimately, the movie serves as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit, both on and off the silver screen. Despite the challenges faced by its cast and crew, the film endures as a powerful example of perseverance in tough times.